And this isn't just hypothetical either. There is already evidence that climate change is reducing the yields of the top 10 food crops by 35 trillion calories each year, enough to feed more than 50 million people. What's up guys, Rosh here and welcome to another episode of Common Climate Claims, a series in which we look at some of the most persistent yet most flawed claims made about climate change. Today we're looking at the claim that CO2 is plant food, which is normally used to imply that human emissions of carbon dioxide will be beneficial for the planet. Now the basis of this argument does seem to make intuitive sense. After all, plants need to photosynthesize to survive, and alongside sunlight and water, the key component for photosynthesis is CO2. So the logic goes that since plants need CO2 to grow, and plant growth is good, CO2 is also good. This makes sense, but it is a bit reductive. And by a bit, I mean a lot. Let me show you why. Just as plants use photosynthesis as their core metabolic process, we humans use respiration, which is metabolically the exact opposite. We take the glucose produced by plants from photosynthesis and break it down into CO2 and water, and we use the energy which is released to live. So if CO2 is plant food, then it follows that glucose, sugar, is human food. And if more food is better, then it follows that a high sugar diet is good for humans. The problem with this should become apparent to anyone with even the most basic understanding of biology, food, or just any life experience at all. For one thing, we need a lot more than just sugar to survive. Trust me, I've tried. There are a whole bunch of other vital nutrients without which we would die, and the same is true in the case of plants and CO2. Now while it's true that you can substantially increase the growth of many plants by increasing CO2 in a greenhouse, these experiments are normally conducted in controlled environments, in which the plants have access to a perfectly stable climate with all the nutrients and water they could possibly need. But in the real world, this isn't the case. In many regions, plant growth is already limited by other vital nutrients like phosphorus, iron, nitrogen, or even water. If any one of these is inhibiting plant growth, then no amount of additional CO2 is going to help. And then there's the second major flaw with this plant food analogy. Just as you can't give someone infinite food and expect their health to improve forever, you can't give plants infinite CO2 and expect infinite benefits. Yes, too little is bad, but so is too much. When we eat too much food, we store those extra calories as fat, we become obese. And when plants get too much CO2, they store that extra carbon as sugar, often at the expense of other nutrients. In essence, they become junk food, which may not sound that bad until you actually think about it. Making our crops more sugary and less nutritious exacerbates both obesity and malnutrition around the world. To add to this, elevated CO2 levels result in a whole bunch of other physiological changes. For example, it's well documented that the leaves of many plants thicken as CO2 rises, and there is evidence to suggest that if CO2 levels get too high, this may inhibit their ability to photosynthesize and reduce the planet's capacity to take CO2 out of the atmosphere. So no. CO2 is not plant food any more than glucose is human food, and increasing CO2 in the atmosphere doesn't necessarily bring benefits. And then of course, there's the elephant in the room. Climate change. As atmospheric CO2 levels rise, they inhibit the planet's ability to lose heat, and so the global temperature increases. Now, I know that there are people out there who dispute this, but much like an elephant on a tightrope, physics isn't on their side. The point is, we can't look at the effects of elevated CO2 on plants without also looking at the corresponding changes in climate. And perhaps one of the biggest factors to consider is illustrated by the equation for photosynthesis. The more eagle-eyed of you will have noticed that plants need more than just CO2 and sunlight to photosynthesize. They need water. Not only that, but most plants need the right amount of water at the right time of year. Too little and they die. Too much, they die. And in the real world, outside of nicely controlled lab experiments, water availability is directly dependent on climate. As the climate changes, so does the availability of water, with some areas getting wetter, others getting drier, and the frequency of both droughts and high intensity rainfall increasing. None of this is particularly good for plants, and when you add increased frequency of heat waves and less predictable seasonality into the mix, it becomes clear that the rosy picture of a greener, healthier, high carbon future isn't so rosy after all. 
And this isn't just hypothetical either. There is already evidence that climate change is reducing the yields of the top 10 food crops by 35 trillion calories each year, enough to feed more than 50 million people. Now it's true that some areas and some crops are seeing benefits, but at best the global outlook is uncertain, and at worst, well, it's pretty bad. And when you think about it, that shouldn't be surprising. Our civilization is based on agriculture, which has depended on a stable, predictable climate for thousands of years. Now the climate is changing, it is disrupting the climatic conditions which farmers all over the world have come to rely on. Can we adapt? Maybe, but as the climate warms, areas which were once perfect for growing crops won't be. You shouldn't need me to tell you that that's not a particularly good thing. 60% of the global population currently relies on agriculture to make a living, and all of us rely on it to, you know, eat. And if you're the kind of person who couldn't care less about undermining global food security, your own survival prospects, or the livelihoods of the world's farmers, then maybe you're the kind of person who might care about the massive economic damage that these things will do. It's hard to make money when you can't eat. So there you are. The simplistic view that CO2 is plant food is not only reductive and factually incorrect, but the implied benefits of a high CO2 environment are really not as clear cut as many like to make out. Most of the evidence suggests that any benefits are more than cancelled out by the negatives, and that overall the picture is not going to be good. So next time you come across someone using this argument, hopefully you'll be able to explain why it's flawed. Or if you're feeling lazy, just show them this video. If you've enjoyed watching then don't forget to like, comment, subscribe and smash that bell icon to be notified whenever I upload. Thanks for watching and until next time, goodbye.